Hi, everybody. Good morning and uh, hope things are going good for you. And I wish you all the very best uh, at the start of this live session and um, pray that uh, you, your, your success, uh, your efforts towards work from home endeavors become a success in the metrics that you want them to measure them. So I am Deepa Goman. I'm a home pranya since 2008. My effort towards working from home began sometime in 2007 when I was into active blogging. Little did I realize that uh, this act is uh, uh, going to uh, you know, give me a rather cumulative effect uh, as to shape my career in a path so unique in its own way. And by the way, just because blogging had the greatest influence uh, on my work from home career, don't conclude that I write blog posts for a living. So I do take up a couple of blogging gigs here and there, but then uh, that's just part of what I do. So today uh, on this slide, we are going to uh, speak about uh, how do you measure your efforts? Now, uh, when, when we begin with an idea, everything starts with an idea. Then idea goes into an action and you make an effort to perform on the action. And then you measure the success of that particular idea by how much of those actions have resulted in, uh, in a sale, if it's going to be a product, in a, in a download, if it's going to be a digital item. So here in the session, we are going to talk about uh, why measuring an effort is such an important thing in the entire uh, cycle of ideation to success. Now, uh, when we talk of effort, we have, uh, everybody have their own metrics of measuring their own efforts. So uh, to make things simple, I'll start with uh, handwriting, with driving, with uh, putting a cone of mehndi uh, in your uh, um, design using your left hand or your ability to do yoga asanas for an extended period of time. Now, these are the, some of the best examples of effort influencing the results. Now, we, we as parents always uh, emphasize uh, to our children that, you know, write a neat handwriting, write a good handwriting. Uh, it makes you look better. It makes your writing look better. When the child is in high school or uh, attending public examination, we motivate them by saying a good handwriting will fetch you better marks. So the, the change does not come immediately. You, know, you can't expect a child's handwriting to become the best just because he or she has practiced it a day before the examination. As parent, you would uh, indulge the child in writing small handwriting exercises every day so that uh, you know, over a period of time, the change becomes rather natural and uh, the child begins to write in a better way. We know that this is a slow change. So we take efforts to make that happen to the child. The child himself might not know that this effort has a long lasting um, uh, effect on the result that it is going to produce. Same like driving, your first day of ride driving. Remember how you drove the first day. Now try to recall how you, uh, how you braved the traffic today and came to your workplace. So all these are uh, live examples of how efforts uh, are going to shape our results. Now, uh, so that said, efforts are rather cumulative in nature. Its effects are visible over an extended period of time. Today we are here to discuss the metrics that can help our um, measure our efforts. So before I dive into the topic, so let me just check on uh, the comments and see if, uh, if somebody wants to you know, give, give me a head start as to something that I should address uh, before I get on with the topic. So uh, let me just give me a minute here. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's somebody asking me that uh, what are the skills that uh, I need to, uh, to become a home runner? Uh, now, before we go there, uh, let me just uh, read up all the questions that I have from the interns. What are the first steps I need to analyze if I have the skills to be a homepreneur? What are the common areas between being an entrepreneur and a homepreneur? The concept of being a homepreneur is still so new that people aren't even perceiving it seriously. How do you feel with such perceptions when you're uh, faded by them? Fair enough. Uh, all comments, fair enough. So answering your first question, what are the steps I need to analyze if I have the skills to be the home runner? The one and only thing that you would need to analyze 
to to be critically um, you know sure that you have what it takes to be a homepreneur can you stick to a me time schedule amongst the rest of the chaotic schedule that you run at your home it could be half an hour it could be one hour it could be two hours but the the golden hour is something that you would rather not part it with anybody irrespective of rain rain or shine whatever happens guest comes you go somewhere um, no no the the kids have a vacation you go out on a vacation there is a golden hour in your day the 24 hour cycle there is a golden hour in your in your day which you would rather not compromise not so ever it could be uh, you could be uh, you could be just going out for a walk at that time you could be binging yourself on netflix at that time you could be you know uh, doing something that interests you the most it could be uh, perhaps you have taken it to uh, swing and you could be uh, doing embroidery at that time something that you would do it for yourself and does not have an impact on the family and the people around you if you are able to analyze and arrive at an answer to this question do i have a golden hour with me then yes you have exactly what it needs to be a home runner because everything else is an acquired skill it's a learned skill or it's a polished skill so you can have it anyway but the golden hour is totally entirely yours without that it is impossible to become a home runner are there common areas between being an entrepreneur and a home runner Yes there are many common areas in fact i would add one more here there are common areas between an entrepreneur home runner and an employee employee rather so an entrepreneur is somebody who uh, who grabs on to an idea who converts the idea into a saleable product or a service and then goes on to find clients for that particular idea a home runner on the same hand is going to look inward she looks at her existing skills she it could be an acquired skill on the corporate job it could be a learned skill that some learned skill something that you learn as a hobby something you learn for personal pleasure it could be music it could be dance it could be a calligraphy it could be just anything so a home runner ideally taps on to her inherent skill whether it's learned on the job or whether something that she's learned for her own uh, personal pleasure and converts it into a saleable idea and employee is uh, an uh, home based employee is somebody who would uh, no dedicate this particular skill to one particular employer a home runner would ideally have multiple clients much like entrepreneurs who service multiple uh, uh, companies and clients um, so home runner also uh, service multiple clients an employee on the other hand is on payroll to a particular employer and they remain loyal to the employer there are no good or bad about it it's all a matter of reason everybody has a reason to be where they are so we will just leave it at that uh, and coming to the third one that are in terms of asked the concept of being a home runner is still so new that people are at even perceiving it seriously how do you feel uh, with such perceptions when you're faded by them now uh, it is true people uh, people wear and i would rather take a past tense here people wear and perceiving home ownership seriously that was somewhere between 2007 and 2010 but uh, post 2010 the scenario has changed corporate is looking up media is looking up work from home professionals are being respected they are being revered now yeah your media circle i mean your possibly your next door neighbor might not know when you say i am a home runner and uh, they might just brush it off casually now just because the person is in front of you just because you are in a personal interaction with that person you might feel a little demotivated you might feel a little like what you know nobody respects what i am doing that kind of a feeling can seep into your uh, uh, into your mind into your thought processes but there are many more out there who respect you for what you are so let us uh, see it's more like uh, how you maneuver yourself in the traffic so i mean uh, the the uh, the gst road has uh, so many cars and so many vehicles going in uh, going the same direction as you but then they uh, you don't take the same turn as the person who is going ahead of you you take the turn where you want to turn homeownership is exactly like that 
you listen to everything around you but you you grasp you you pick information only that is relevant to you that is going to be of useful to you relevance as in servicing uh, so providing service as a skill uh, uh, service to a client uh, useful as in something that motivates you something that keeps you going something that encourages you so you just let out all the other useless traffic to brush past you you wouldn't want to be affected by how that traffic is going to turn out to be so don't fret too much on what um, others perceive of you especially when it is in a negative light but when the others perception of what you are doing is on a more positive sense then go ahead grab it build on it uh, no uh, and 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 be known so i think that should uh, answer most of it now right so that apart uh this is something else that uh, i would uh, like to touch upon when we come to measuring the measuring uh, metrics of an effort so so uh, most aspiring entrepreneurs they confuse desire effort result and success however each one has its own life cycle and cannot be measured on the same scale so it's important to segregate separate determine devote deliver and then measure them to know that impact so let me repeat it again it is important to segregate separate determine devote deliver and then measure them to understand the impact um who who loves pizza i rather who doesn't love pizza everybody loves isn't it so the desire here is i want to eat a homemade pizza now what is the effort that goes into it you go to the market to pick the ingredients you research the recipe and prep your items on your kitchen counter you refer the recipe and get the pot cooking and then finally you put the dish on the plate and then you start eating now there are two measures of effort here I mean you measure how do you measure this effort you measure this particular effort by actually eating it now what does this metric convey back to you the metric says it tastes awesome i'm going to make it again sometimes the metric will tell you this tastes absolutely horrible now it is your choice at this point to decide do you want to stop making this effort or do you want to continue the effort on a on a different scale saying that i will have to do it differently next time this is what separates uh, or differentiates a regular um, uh, no somebody who has nothing else to do to somebody who is actually making an effort towards working from home towards becoming a home runner your your efforts have given you two metrics to reflect upon one it tastes awesome the choice is very obvious i'm going to do it again the second metric says that the the pizza that you just made but all by yourself is absolutely horrendous it's horrible now would you want to try it again with the with the change in your recipe with the change in the ingredient some change incorporated so that it doesn't it doesn't taste exactly like how you are tasting now it could be better it could be worse but at least you know what not to do or rather how to take it forward you will get a sense of direction the result of this particular exercise is a homemade pizza the measure of success here mind you what we just discussed was a measure of effort whereas the actual measure of success here is you get the confidence to volunteer to make a huge batch of homemade pizza for the next uh, family gathering or let's say you're inviting a uh, uh, you know your your entire gang your kids gang into your home for a birthday party and instead of sourcing pizza from out you are going to make them a very healthy homemade pizza now that is a measure of success so the measuring your efforts will give you the confidence to determine your success and deliver it on the plate to the client no this is just a dish of pizza if i mean pizza makes us happy pasta makes us happy cheese makes us happy now imagine if you can come up with similar uh, um no uh, similar efforts similar metrics that will measure your own efforts then uh, wouldn't that be great towards your work from home career what say isn't it um so that's pretty, so uh, i was still wondering now how would somebody who is into a service based business like uh, let's say somebody has taken 
writing how would that person measure the effort now a person who is first uh, looking into writing the effort would be measured as uh, it's not about how many articles i write a day it's not about how many uh, how, how much of a research i can do it in a day your first draft is your first measure of effort proofreading proofreading them again checking for typos um uh, Uh, doing uh, formatting like giving the right headings perhaps it's too wordy you might want to condense it into um, a bullet points or uh, it's too texty and you might want to have uh, uh, an image that reflects the, the intent of the text and you go about sourcing such image or even better you prepare some image out of your own text then that is a measure of effort you could pass along multiple rungs of measures in a while measuring your effort but at the end of it you deliver it to the client once and the client says i don't require any revisions this is just right for me that is your measure of success so the client say okay now i might need one minor revision where uh, could you please include my product name in this paragraph that is a measure of success now imagine you just sent out that first draft that you have directly to the client and uh, the client has came back with all the changes which you would otherwise still do then in that case would it look bad uh, on you uh, as a service provider that that metric is not about uh, success that metric is more about you know the client you give the feeling to the client that okay Mm, this person deepa's writing is not really up to the mark looks like i have to ask multiple revision now it's because that 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 is perceived as failure by a service provider so in order to avoid the perception of failure always have a clear plan as to how you want to measure your mm, effort begin your work measure your effort and then you will find out that your uh, your your efforts will slowly go on to become more focused and your success will become uh, clearer your goals will become clearer to you hmm hamida says <coughs> hi deepa <coughs> i'm a fresher and i want to know how one can be a home runner and what uh, kind of a work can be done hamida um There, there's no course on home printer basically it's not it's not a ba course or or it's not a bcom it's not a you know ms zoology or or a you know phd in aquatic biology or uh, you know or an mca that you would go to a college and take a course of one a home printer a, a home printer is an idea it's it's a brand it's brand you now what are you capable of doing don't do not rely on others to tell you what you can do you can take the help and figure out what you are best at you could be best at uh, uh, you know you could be uh, a best hr in your uh, company but um, you know, after a career break you might not want to do hr related work now in spite of being best you could still do the same hr related work from home as well but would it give you the right amount of satisfaction i doubt it now you could be better at something else as well apart from what you do at the corporate side it's a choice that you're going to take do i want to continue my corporate career uh, while still being at home then you need to take steps going that way otherwise you can reflect back into yourself i personally know of somebody who has been an uh, who's an excellent uh, teacher but as uh, out of passion she does uh, baking out of home I know somebody who is an excellent uh, social media strategist. She has been on social media for a very, very long time, but she does not offer it as a service anymore. In fact, uh, she says, "I enjoy doing social media for myself, so I am not going to offer it as a service. Instead, the kind of service she offers is is a is a niche coach. She gives an she gives niche advices. So." these are some of the things that you could figure out i uh, you can connect with me uh, later and i will let you know uh, you know uh, who are these people and how they have been doing it so uh, you should you should try to reflect upon yourself and see what are the best things that you could do would you want to take the same route as your corporate career and go on and uh, and and be a home runner in that line or would you like to try something else because home runnership gives you the options of trying 
there's only little that you can try uh, when you're in a corporate setup because you you have deadlines to meet you have tasks to be done you have to you know uh, you know there are people depending on your deliverables so that they can deliver a couple of other things uh, to the client so it's more about reflection and it's an evolving thing you might say that today i want to become uh, let's say uh, i want to run a craft uh, studio from my home and 6 months later uh, you could even shift gears and say okay i'm done with my craft studio i think i would better be an event manager from home so that's the flexibility that home entrepreneurship gives you um divya uh, divya asks is it possible to become a home entrepreneur without investing much money but investing time divya i must say you have hit the nail home entrepreneur is all about investing time it's totally uh, about investing time and uh, we as aspiring home entrepreneurs time is the only commodity that we have with us um yes you can do that you can totally do that uh, you might be having i will uh, i will uh, club my answer with a couple of other questions that uh, somebody else has also asked that we have so many ideas how do we know which one uh, would work for us so take to paper remember the golden hour that i spoke about a little earlier uh, on those golden hours they take to a pen and a paper put your ideas in paper and invest your time in researching these ideas you uh, you give yourself a timeline two days three days a week uh, be realistic about your timeline and invest in each one of these ideas research on these ideas find out who else is working on a similar idea and what had been their journey what is their end product what are they servicing what are they selling and how are they selling it don't come to any judgment as of right now if you're having three ideas uh, invest uh, three uh, one day for each and at the end of third day consolidate all your research and then ask the same question again whichever stands out to you you should probably pursue that again it is not written on stone you can go ahead and and shift gears anytime but shift the gear only after you have tried and tested it out not on hearsay not because somebody says ah this is not going to work or oh, everybody does that what is it that you want to do i mean why would somebody want to do do not base your decision on what you hear or what you read base your decision uh, on what you understand out of it sushmita asks i have never worked on a company before i got married and i have school going kids can i become a home entrepreneur no definitely sushmita uh, to be here uh, to be honest i okay so i started off as a home entrepreneur uh, so my journey uh, started with blogging i would uh, it, it didn't uh, home entrepreneurship didn't occur to me at that point in time but i was blogging rather voraciously so uh, one one uh, one positive aspect of uh, being a blogger is you you read a lot you have to research a lot because you, very soon you run short of title ideas to blog about so it is though, during one of these you know research spree i had come up with a couple of uh, saleable ideas and uh, employed the same tricks that i've just shared research on them for a day a couple of days three days and then narrow down into something that can be managed into a saleable scale so yes uh, you certainly can you and you should try to identify what you can do with uh, with the knowledge that you have learned in all these years it could be from your academia it could be something that you have learned from your family it could be something that you you are probably volunteering with somebody um, for uh, for a summer class so there has to be something everybody has something that can be offered as a service or as a product we just need to look inward and make sure that it can be packaged as a solution and and given it back to the society you can definitely be a home entrepreneur uh, rajni says uh, she was into event management when i was in us now i am back in india and looking for some entrepreneurial opportunity can you suggest some 
Uh, Rajini, if you're looking for entrepreneurship, then uh, I am assuming that you already have a, a, a business idea with you as an event uh, you know, by opening up an event management concern with the right kind of contacts for uh, decorators, for lighting, uh, for uh, uh, no, for photography, for videography, and you know having to coordinate them all and package it into um, and, and package it into a solution for uh, private events, personal events, corporate events. So in that case, it would not be a typical entrepreneurial journey. It would be more on a, at an entrepreneurial level. So it could be like Rajini's event management company. It could be as simple as that. So is, if this is what you desire, then you should certainly look in that direction and take efforts and make sure to measure your effort each step of the way. Measuring the success is the easy part. Once you begin to measure your effort, your metrics to measure the success will open up for you. Otherwise, you will end up uh, measuring uh, the success in its wrong metric. Uh, no, that is a common example saying that you know you cannot measure the the success of a fish and an elephant by uh, making them run on the uh, same terrain. That's because the effort put by uh, a fish is best reflected in, in, in an aquatic terrain uh, rather for an uh, elephant on a more terrestrial level. So you need to identify the right kind of metrics to, uh, to measure your efforts. Once that uh, gets clearer, once the cloud settles at that, once the cloud clears away from, the, from your efforts, then your success will uh, begin to shine on you. Uh, Divya, uh, we get a lot of business ideas. How do we find the right one? It is good that you're getting a lot of business ideas. It goes to show that you are actively thinking uh, in, in the process of, you know, becoming a homepreneur. So do not let the ideas die at the idea stage. Go ahead and put them on paper because the more you put it on paper, the more you, you're, you're, you're able to see it, um, you know, as, as once your ideas begins to manifest, then your efforts will also come to you. So if your idea is to start a catering business, then the the next step that you would probably do is, okay, what are the kind of food that I can offer? So the effort there goes into listing out the, the cuisine that you can deliver. Now, within those cuisines, what are the unique items that are very special that only Divya can deliver? So there goes your next, 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 and next. So if you have lots of business ideas, spend, uh, spend time evaluating this idea at a very small level, at a minuscule level, at, at, your, at your residence level, at your community level. Um, try to gather feedback uh, by, by observing uh, the reaction of the people around you. This should give a good uh, starting point as to how to progress with it. Yeah. So coming back to for uh, you no, know, when we say nothing, uh, nothing succeeds like success, and success breeds success. But uh, success is not standalone; it is born out of uh, effort. Um, so I would like to you know, come back. To how effort makes uh, such a big impact and importance in uh, in measuring our success, um, I would like to point out the the example of uh, Usain Bolt. Now Usain Bolt, we all know he is a world record holder. Uh, he has completed 100 meters in 9.5 seconds, and that we see it as a success. And the media is all over him. We have uh, no, uh, the, you can get the specific details from his Guinness record uh, data. Now, since this live is all about effort, let's go back a step behind success, before success, and see what have, what actually led to this particular success. What could be the effort that he had put in to attain this success? Is it that hard to guess? I'll give you a minute to reflect on it. kind of an effort would have gone um, into the training of Usain Bolt so that he is able to complete 100 meter dash in a 9.5 second time. The, uh, the very the most simplest uh, simplified version of his effort 
can be or is something that I can think of is he trained for uh, the uh, track event over and over and over and again. Repetitiveness. He has been repeating the same action over and over and again. Every day he would come to the field. He has a 100 meter mark. He would run the 100 meter mark, time him, walk back again, run again, time me, time himself. Now imagine somebody having to watch one fellow having to go run the same distance again and again. In coming to think of it, it's, it's really boring to watch somebody go over and over and again. Uh, you you tend to get the tendency of you know moving away and you know doing something else. That is because you're an observer. That is because you're a spectator. Now look at the same thing from the eyes of an eyes of the Usain Bolt. Eyes of Usain Bolt. He is he is taking he's taking a dash of hundred meters. He's looking at the stop clock. He's asking his coach how what time did I make it? He walks back again, thinking that okay. This time I crossed it in 10 seconds. So probably the next run that I'm going to make, I should somehow uh, reduce my time by 9.9 .9 seconds. So he, he is measuring his effort every, every step of the way. So each dash that he makes is a cycle of an effort. So from day one to the day that he actually, you know, uh, uh, did the world record of 9.5 seconds. I can only imagine how many times he would have repeated the same action of running that same 100 meter mark day after day and multiple times in a day. It doesn't really sound very exciting when we read or speak about it. But the cumulative effect of this repetitive action is that him becoming a world record holder with a 9.5 second uh, time to cross a 100 meter uh, dash. Now that is what makes him extremely special. That's what makes athletes extremely unique in, in, in their success. It's just not a sample. You can take anybody. You can take Pityusha. You can take Sindhu. These people have been training and practicing and practicing and repeating their actions. They don't get their shot right. They repeat that particular action over and over and over again. Ever watched young uh, cricketers, you know, training on, on the nets? They uh, they repeat those action over and over and over again, again. So the success to becoming a homepreneurship is to repeat your effort over and over and over again. We have all the time with us. So let us. Uh, See, let us be liberal with our time. Let us be merciful on ourselves and be liberal with our time. We are not uh, under any kind of stress to uh, showcase rather, to showcase, okay, Deepa is going to be ABC in the next five days. No, Deepa is under no such pressure to do that. So what happens is when you take the, that particular stress out of the mind, you go on with, you know, you, you are more focused in your approach. You are more, um, uh, you have better clarity on how you're going to uh, invest your energy and your time in your effort. So that way, your effort begins to make sense to yourself, not to anybody else. Trust me, nobody cares about your efforts. Everybody would look at your success, but nobody would want to care about your effort. It is like, uh, um, you know, it's like sitting and watching somebody on the stands. So that is not going to be very exciting. So make sure that you have a good track of the effort uh, that that you want to put in. Uh, Deepika, uh, <laughs> Deepika, you're already into the path of uh, homepreneurship. So Deepika, she says that uh, I working as a freelancer, how to increase income at home. Uh, so Deepika, I, I'm assuming that you have, you already have a foothold on whatever service that you're providing. Uh, I would advise that, uh, look up other freelancers, other consultants in the same niche that you are, uh, observe them, follow them on social media, uh, you know, attend their webinars, um, uh, if they have any, you know, Facebook or Pinterest or uh, Instagram or Twitter groups happening, uh, be part of the conversation, listen to them and connect with them and uh, and try to gain their mentorship that will give you 
a better insight into how you can service yourself to high paying clients. Uh, Prachi, how, how can we optimize the efforts taken? Yes, optimizing the effort starts with measuring them. Remember the pizza story? So when your efforts are going to tell you that, you know, this, uh, when my metric says that this pizza is going to, is tasting horrendous, I have a choice whether to try it differently next time and make it, and make an effort to make it better, or I just abandon my pizza making effort at, at all levels. So that is how you optimize your effort. At the end of your effort, you always have two choices. Pick a choice that has the possibility of giving you more choices in the future. I could have easily said, okay, this pizza tastes horrendous. I am going to stop making pizza whatsoever. The end. The end of my pizza making story. My effort is, uh, I mean, I, 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 am, I am refusing success to myself by, uh, by not taking the other route where I have chances of improvement. So that is how you optimize your effort. Akshata, uh, Akshita asked, Deepa, how do you, how do, how would we measure the payoff for efforts put in your work? No, efforts do not get paid. As an entrepreneur, uh, please do remember your efforts do not get paid. Efforts makes you better. Your, let us assume that you are, I mean, remember that, uh, you know, the writing the first draft and giving it to the client. You could have spent, uh, let's say, five days, you know, drafting, revising yourself, doing a, a review with a, a, a trusted colleague and re-revising it. And in, uh, from text, you have gone into a combination of text and images and you have put the relevance links. So uh, from how your uh, content has shaped from draft one to the draft that gets submitted to the client, it could have gone through uh, close to you know eight to ten iterations. That is your effort. The payoff for that effort is the client coming back and telling me, okay, I don't need any further changes. I will take this and uh, your, this content is approved and you will receive payment of it. So your deliverables are what that gives you a payoff. It is not your effort. Effort is what that makes your deliverables better. So if you, uh, if, if somebody is telling you that you're not getting paid off for your efforts, then do make sure that efforts are for your own self development. They, they makes your deliverable better so that you can get paid better. Uh, no, the, uh, you cannot demand a payment for your effort, especially when you're working from home. Uh, so I, would that uh, uh, help uh, Akshita? Okay. Alipa, can you tell us some metrics which we can be, we can use for measuring our effort? It depends on the type of, uh, uh, the type of intent that you are going to measure. Uh, I'll come back to my pizza story. So the intent was to make a homemade pizza, and the effort that I took was to, you know, uh, to go to go to. Uh, I mean, rather the action that I took on that intent was to go to the market, to source the ingredient, to prep the items, to cook the items, and eating what I have just made is also the preparation, or rather the action that I'm doing on that intent. So measuring that effort is, uh, is it good or is it bad? That's the basic level of uh, measure. Now, uh, if you can give me some uh, um, examples, uh, as in writing is a common thing where you know, if there are typos, the metric is you need to measure your effort on the first draft by checking for typos. That would be a metric. Uh, if you're a baker, your effort on the first cake would be to check is it soft enough is it fluffy enough did i put a, a little too much of a egg or did i put a little uh, less of a baking powder so it's more about how cute it's it, it's uh, it's very unique to the intent that you're trying to uh, work upon towards success let's say that uh, you you are uh, trying to um, let's say uh, you are a graphic expert and uh, you're trying to learn a new tool um, something that's not taught in colleges, something that's not taught in graphic uh, schools. So your effort there would be you're able to replicate a particular um, uh, particular effect in a photograph. It could be the blur effect. It could be uh, you you could take up a, 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 a simple raw photograph and give it a nice framing with a good watermark that is not intrusive. You might be good at doing it at a at a tool like uh, uh, Photoshop. 
which is very comfortable for you but you're trying to learn a new tool uh, let's call it um, could be photo p or pixel then uh, then uh, you you try to you replicate the similar effect in a new tool and you come out uh, you and when you compare the ones that you do excellently uh, in, in photoshop and the ones that you've just learned in a new tool you're able to compare it and if you can pinpoint the differences between the deliverables here then that is a measure of uh, effort so a measure of effort the whole story of being a home runner is to look inward and be highly critical of yourself without affecting your emotional balance despite being the critical nature of it so that is how you go about measuring the effort uh, it can it can get a little abstract as we talk more about it but trust me it is it's not uh, it's not very difficult to measure your effort have your intent right i mean don't go about uh, generalizing everything try to try to pinpoint on 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 the very very basic idea or very basic deliverable that you are planning out of that intent so you have an intent which needs to be followed by an action or rather a set of action these set of action will give you the metrics for the efforts that you want to measure and use these metrics and then you pick a path for your success that is how uh, you pave your own uh, path to be a home runner uh, i trust that uh, this would have uh, the uh, no i trust that uh, these help you with some kind of insight to to start on yourself without depending on anybody to tell you what to do a home runner never depends on anybody to tell herself what to do she listens a lot she observes a lot and she makes sure that she I mean, there's no shame in asking. You can totally ask. You can totally convey. You can take in all the suggestions, but you know yourself better. You understand your golden hour. Keep a golden hour for yourself, and make sure that every day you measure the effort taken for that day. So today I have made made an effort to connect with you all on this webinar. Now, how do I measure this effort? I measure this effort by the number of questions you are asking. and uh, i also measure this effort with how uh, how difficult uh, it is for me to respond to you or how easy it is for me to respond to you so that is how i measure today's effort now uh, is today's effort a, a success or not how do i measure my success there my measure of success here would more be Uh, somebody one of you coming back and tell, telling me the by your uh, no the metrics of effort uh, worked out for me it really helped me then that is a success for you when somebody says it did not work out for me i did not understand a word of what you have just said to us then i am probably not really successful that with that particular person then i might have to uh, rethink and redo my uh, uh, my title next time when i'm connecting with you so there is an intent which has to be followed by a set of actions and the actions culminate into an effort and the effort will open up its own metric for you to measure do not be afraid to repeat your effort the more you repeat your effort differently each time the more likely you are to get into a path of success i wish you all a very lovely day ahead and more success to your work from home endeavors See you. Bye.